You remain standing tonight as we read from the Word of God. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2, it says this. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. It goes on to say a little further down. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name and whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. We just pray, God. We just thank you so much tonight. Just thank you so much tonight. You're here. God, that you're worthy. What if we just spend these next few moments just gleaning from your word, God? Would you continue just to speak to our hearts, God? Lord, tonight I pray for those who need to understand that they were made by you, God. For you and for your glory. Lord, tonight that you would continue to reveal yourself to us. Lord, we thank you tonight. In your name we pray. Man, just remain standing where you are. I believe, uh, just as we worship standing, that the word of God is worship as well. Amen. We just want to share with you. Um, my name is Brian. I'm Aaron's tour pastor. We've been traveling together for over a year now. Last year, we ran over a hundred cities, cities across the U.S. and Canada. We've seen God do unbelievable, things. God do unbelievable things. We've been off since October, been off since October as you can see the excitement from, from these two. They're coming with it tonight. They're, coming with it tonight. Amen. They're bringing it. We've been off since October and, and took, that time, off took that time off specifically just to rest, spend time with our families, spend time with our families just but just to seek God had for this, this year. Is this is our first out. night back whole out. Year whole year is just planned full of events. Tonight we're here with you. Tonight we're here with you. By, by coincidence or accident. You're not here you're not here tonight as well. I was just praying backstage. I said, God, what do you want to say tonight to this group of people? It's so easy just to regurgitate something else. It's so easy just to regurgitate something else. It sounds really it good. No it does you no benefit or I. So I just really believe that God so was just impressing this on my heart as AJ was about sharing with about struggles and Aaron's been sharing. The thing is we don't know your story and it would be so amazing if we had the ability to sit down with each and every one of you and hear your story. And I know tonight when you hear this scripture, I know tonight when you hear this scripture he says, bring everyone to me, everyone who I created for my glory, who I created to make my name known. If you're anything like us, you might think I'm not worthy, messed up way too much. God, there's no way that you're talking about me. There's no way that somehow that you could love a broken person. Tonight, maybe you are having those thoughts of me. Have ever so often going, God, are you for real? Sending us there. Why? Not in that way. I meant like, why? Not in that way. I meant like, why would he send us? Yeah, sorry. That came out. Well, maybe both ways. Well, maybe both ways. No, I'm just kidding. No, but literally, we're asking God, why would you send three incredibly messed up guys? Through everyday struggle. Who every day miss the mark. Every day miss the mark. Tonight, as I hope you've seen, tonight, as I hope you've seen, we're, we're just here to share one thing, and that's Jesus Christ. The hope that is only found. The hope that is only found in Him. But maybe you're having those thoughts. Maybe you're having those thoughts, and I was thinking about this, and the story came to mind that I believe for many of you is ever so familiar. It's found in Matthew chapter 15, verse 11. It's this parable about the lost son. Prodigal son, you've probably heard, it. Son, you've probably heard it. Because I was just backstage reading. I was just backstage reading and God was just reminding me of some things I just want to share with you briefly. There's this story of this son. He goes to his father and asks for his inheritance. Because he wants to go do his own thing. Make a long story short, he 
to make a long story short, he goes out and wasted away on things that he thought would satisfy. He ends up the lowest of the lows, hanging out and eating with pigs, which in that day was just didn't do that. You didn't smell like bacon. You didn't eat bacon. I didn't associate with bacon. I love bacon. Amen. Thank goodness that the Lord came and took care of all that stuff for us. Amen. Mm. That'll preach. That'll preach. Listen to this. So this son is out. And he's really at the lowest flow. He's lost all these friends that were there. Everyone that he thought was his friend. And I love what it says in verse 17. It says, when he came to his senses. He was out there going like, what am I doing? This is crazy. I used to live in a palace that had all this stuff. It says, when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have feared to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son, but make me like one of your hired men. And so he got up and went to his father. Because he came to his senses and realized, like, wow, like, there's nothing else to go. So I'm just going to go back to my dad and just say, Dad, I'm just begging you. Just let me be your servant. I don't even want to be your son anymore. I don't deserve that. I love this next verse. It says, but while he was still a long way off, that his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son and he threw his arms around him and kissed him. And the son began his plea. He said, Father, I've sinned against you and against heaven, and I'm no longer worthy to be your son. But the father cuts him off. It says, But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him, and bring a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf and kill it. And let's have a feast and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they begin to celebrate. So you hear that story like, yeah, that's great. I've heard that before. We had the felt board and move the guys around. Like I've heard that before. That's great. Here's what I want you to realize tonight. It says that while he was a long way off, that his father saw him. I want you got to understand here that this picture of this father in this story is Jesus. It's not necessarily about two sons, a good one, a bad one, and his father, but it's about Jesus. It says that he was looking for him. His father was staring out the window, and Jesus is looking for you. And it says, when he saw him, he was filled with compassion. And here's the crazy thing. He began to run after his son. Now, why is that such a big deal? When that day in that culture, a very high-ranking man such as the father did not run. It was unacceptable. He was looked down upon. But his father was so overwhelmed and filled with compassion that he began to run after his son. Scholars would think and would even say that as this is a picture of Jesus, what Jesus is doing is he's actually running to his son before anyone else gets to him. Because if other Jews would have gotten to his son before he did, that he would have been killed because of what he had done to his family. So here's a picture of Jesus running to protect his son from the law. He's running to keep his son from being killed and getting what he deserves. Such a beautiful picture. Such a beautiful picture. Think about it. He's protecting us from the consequences of our sin. Tonight, I don't know where you find yourself. Tonight, I don't know where you find yourself. We just want you to know this, that God loves you. We just want you to know this, that God loves you. cares for you. That he cares for you. He is looking for you. He is looking for you. He has compassion. He has compassion. When you come to your senses, you come to your senses as the prodigal son did and realized, wow, I just need to go back to my dad. He had it all. Maybe I'll just go back and serve him. When you come back to your senses, God is waiting for you and he is running after you. Such a picture that's just overwhelming me. God's running after me. He's not wanting to stop you in the middle of your. God, I'm sorry. I just want to tell you what I. He's like, no, look, I love you. I don't care. I'm going to give you the best. I'm going to give you 
want to give you the best. I want to give you everything that you had, that you forgot, that you gave it for my son. God, we're here tonight. God, we're here tonight. Lord, I believe you're speaking to our hearts. God, there's those here tonight. God, there's those here tonight. Lord, that we've taken. Lord, that we've taken. Squandered. We've squandered. We've wasted. Lord, we've wasted. God, tonight I believe that you're waking us up. God, tonight I believe that you're waking us up, God, that we're coming to our senses. God, that we realize that we need you. God, that we realize that we need you. And we realize that, and that we realize that without you were nothing. Without you were nothing. So God, tonight I just pray for so those. God, tonight I just pray you're for those that you're just speaking to. Boys, we're coming to our senses. And Boys, we're coming to our senses. And you, God, you we're coming back towards you, God. That you are looking for us. You're just waiting on us. To that you're just waiting on us to realize. Well, that you're filled with compassion. Well, that you're filled with compassion, and you are running towards us. God, to meet us, God, because you want to cover us. You don't want to allow the consequences of you don't our want to allow the consequences God, of our sin not to play out, out, but because of what you did for us, God. You just want to protect us. Want to protect us. I thank you for this picture tonight. Lord. I thank you for this picture tonight. Lord. Tonight, if you're here, tonight, if you're here, we just want to simply ask you to, we just, want to simply ask you to just, you just continue a trend of honesty that you have throughout this evening. We're not here to embarrass you. We're not here to embarrass you. No one's looking We're around. We're not going to call you up front or anything, but we believe so strongly that we traveled this way, that we left our families, that we're here tonight for this specific reason, for you to realize, to come to your senses that you need Jesus. So tonight, I just want to ask you this question. So tonight, I just want to ask you this question. Tonight, maybe for the first time that you're here, and you realize, I need Jesus. Just sense something different tonight. I just want to invite him into my life. I just understand that he loves me no matter what I've done or how I've messed up. Tonight I just want to make that decision. Tonight I just want to make that decision. Tonight I just want to invite him into my life. If you're here tonight, we're not here to embarrass you. We believe so strongly in his grace and his mercy. We know that tonight he's here and he wants to meet with you. He is running after you tonight. If that's you tonight, and we just want to pray for you, if that's you, you, if that's you to say for the first time tonight, Brian, that's me, and I just like to invite Christ into my life. You just raise your hand where you are tonight, whether you're in the front or the back. If that's you tonight, if anyone that would be honest, say, God, I just need to do this. If you're here tonight, if you're here tonight, maybe this prodigal son is a picture of you. That once you were walking with Christ, you've been out doing your own thing. Tonight you've come to your senses and you understand that you're nothing without Him. That you are nothing without Him. Maybe tonight you just need to give your life back to Him, just to make a statement. Say, God, I'm sorry. I need Your grace. If that's you tonight, wherever you are, would you just slip up your hands? I just need to make that statement tonight. Brian. Thanks for being honest. I just need to give my life back to Christ or the others. I just want to pray with you, God. You see these hands. I just want to pray with you, God. You see these hands. Lord, I just thank you for these brothers and Lord, sisters. I just thank you for these brothers and sisters who are just honest and open, just to say, I need you. Just pray as your word says, God. Lord, I just pray as your word says, God. Well, if we confess with our mouth, we will believe, God. Lord, we will be saved. Lord, we just in our own words say something like this, God. I'm sorry. I need sorry you. For the way I've sorry you. for the way I've treated you. Lord, I'm so thankful for your Thank grace. You you're running after me with thankful that you're running after God, me with compassion. God, tonight I accept that. Lord, Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Just to come into my life. Lord, I want my life to be about you. Lord, I want my life to be as it says in Isaiah that when you call your sons and daughters from afar, God, that we would make your name known. That we would bring glory to your name. Lord, would you do that in our lives? Lord, we thank you for your grace. Lord, most of all, we thank you for your grace. Lord, without your grace, Lord, none of us be here tonight. So, Lord, we just thank you. Would you just be with us as we finish out this night, just worshiping you? Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for, 
thank you for your grace. Lord, thank you for love. Tonight we just worship you. In your name we pray.